Members, we now move to the votes in the external sector. And the question is that vote customs, vote defence, vote defence force, vote foreign affairs and trade, and vote official development assistant, assistance stand part of the schedules. I call Todd Muller. Very good. Thank you, Mr Chair. Looking forward to uh, taking a call on this bundle of uh, impressive portfolios uh, that we discussed at Foreign Affairs, uh, Defence and Trade. And I'd like to uh, kick off first, if I may, uh, Mr Chair, with uh, the estimate uh, hearing we had in uh, last month with respect to Foreign Affairs and Trade specifically. Uh, we heard um, of a significant uh, appropriation of just on a half a billion uh, for the upcoming year, an increase of 8 per cent, reflecting uh, the priority that the government uh, puts on trade. Obviously, Trade Agenda 2030, a key part of our priority to support uh, export growth uh, for New Zealand businesses around the world. Um, that's a $91.3 million uh, uh, commitment over four years. And 27 million uh, of that, Mr. Chair, will be to support the uh, uh, trade resources, both here and in market, of uh, MFAT, which will go a, a long way towards our broader strategy of 90% of New Zealand's current goods export covered by FTAs by uh, 2030. Um, uh, in our hearing, we heard that these, uh, the initiative, the spending, is going to focus on the establishment of a high, commissioner, a high commission in Sri Lanka. Uh, and as somebody who's a former Fonterra uh, executive, that's a very good thing to hear because there's significant uh, dairy and other interests in Sri Lanka uh, for New Zealand and it's good that we will now have uh, uh, an, a uh, High Commission based uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, an establishment of an embassy in Ireland, uh, sir, uh, and I was also pleased to hear the additional support we're providing for the New Zealand uh, Antarctic uh, Inst Institute. Uh, we had quite a significant conversation around um, non-tariff bar barriers and again, sir, I was very pleased to hear uh, from uh, the Minister the commitment we are making through our, our Trade Agenda 2030 to invest in market to support um, New Zealand businesses to deal with these uh, increasing uh, uh, non-tariff uh, barriers. Uh, you know, we have 85,000 exporting companies in this country and sometimes um, you know, the, the interests of the 85,000 exporters uh, on which this uh, country relies so heavily in terms of our ongoing standard of living. Uh, sometimes in the debate, particularly when I'm listening to the other side, gets lost. And it's, it's great to know that this government is part uh, of a, uh, ha has an agenda to particularly focus on ensuring that they have uh, as easy access to the markets of their opportunity and future uh, as possible. And I'm delighted to see, sir, that we are uh, investing uh, to enable that to happen. Uh, we had a very good uh, hearing uh, in defence. Um, the Honourable Mark Mitchell, who's doing a superb job um, uh, taking over that portfolio and is well respected by uh, all of the committee, and I am sure I can speak for all of them uh, in that respect, talked to the um, Vote Defence Force uh, appropriation uh, of $3.38 billion, uh, and a significant uh, components of that will be new and upgraded military equipment. Uh, as part of our uh, commitment outlined in the Defence White Paper of $20 billion worth of capability over the next 15 years. Uh, sir, one of the uh, areas that I was particularly pleased uh, that our committee uh, traversed with the Minister is that uh, uh, not only are we spending uh, an extraordinary amount of capital to uh, support New Zealand's security uh, interests uh, globally, uh, but also the way that capital is going to be deployed and how we are going to procure that significant investment on behalf of New Zealand taxpayers uh, is very impressive. We heard, sir, that uh, a number of experts are now working in uh, improving our capability or the Defence Force uh, uh, capability around procurement, uh, a lift up to 40 people and certainly uh, uh, from my sort of, uh, I guess, commercial uh, perspective, uh, it is often an area, sir, that is uh, under-invested in, uh, in the commercial world, and it's great to see that the Ministry of Defence see the uh, uh, importance of ensuring we have very good people to underpin what will be a significant $20 billion uh, procurement uh, uh, program over the next uh, few years. And finally, uh, sir, in my last few uh, seconds, I do want to acknowledge the contribution of uh, Minister McIndoe, Tim McIndoe, when we discuss customs. Uh, we heard about the updated and uh, upgraded smart gate and the joint board of management system. Sir, a number of these projects uh, are seen at the time as sort of 
uh, highly technical, but they do facilitate uh, trade and business and reflects this uh, government's priority in ensuring that uh, the businesses that ultimately make the value and money and success of this country are enabled to the greatest extent in terms of their engagement with the world and the opportunities that are in front of them. And across the three portfolios, sir, we heard uh, in spades the commitment of the government to deliver on that. Thank you. I call uh, Ian Lees Galloway. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Uh, this